Welcome to Construction Project Management School of Technology at Eastern Illinois University, uh, course INT4243. And uh, it's uh, my pleasure to ha uh, welcome uh, Mr. Les Dallas with us today for um, an interview about construction project management. Very good. And uh, congratulate you for a successful project management, successful project, successful business that you have. Thank you. It's uh, not always successful, but most of the time. I mean, when you try <laughs> harder, you arrive. Yeah, right. Tell us something about your business. What do you do? We do plumbing, heating, air conditioning, water service installation, sewer installation. So basically mechanical work on, on new work and renovation, both. And you work in, in Charleston area, Mattoon area? And we work in a 60-mile radius of Charleston, so we go... Uh, 120 miles from extreme points as a rule. Very good. Now these 60 miles were, were uh, determined because of economical or practical or? Practical, because of the cost of sending crews. Uh, if you go too long of a distance then you're up to keeping them overnight, motels, food, yeah. and expense of running the trucks that distance too. So. So it raises the, the price of, of work if you go beyond that. If so. you go beyond that, yes, it, it's, we have to start adding on extra money to cover our extra cost. And this would uh, make the price that you bid um, not competitive? So. Not competitive with the local people normally, in, there, yes. in that area. Okay. Did you have to get a license to do the, do the work? or? All of our plumbing work is licensed. We have a contractor's license with the state of Illinois. We have individual plumbers license to do plumbing work. We have apprentice license for the folks that's learning the plumbing trade. Mm -hmm. Heating and air conditioning, there is not a state license in this area, so basically we're just bonded that we're doing the work properly. What bonded means? Bonded is the insurance company underwrites our work and if we improperly do something then they back up the liability if we don't take care of it. So being bonded uh, gives assurance to the owner of the, of the job that you're working for that you'll not default or... That's correct. They will. The being bonded just uh, gives assurance to the owner or whoever the contract is with that in the event we don't fulfill our obligation somebody else will step in and, and have the work completed to their uh, satisfaction. And you pay that or the... the uh, well, then the bonding company will sue us. And then so the, it's the, litigation from that point on. Okay. Now, you you need to pay premiums to them? Yes. To yeah. I mean, it's a, they charge a fee okay. based upon uh, your track record, I guess one would say. Okay. So your fee is based upon the fact that... Uh, if you are safe or have good reputation yeah. or something. Now, if you are new in the business, or, or for somebody who is coming new to the business or new to the area, uh, this premium would be typically higher? Probably would be typically higher, but they also go by the by the overall trade as a rule and what the exposure like for the plumbing industry is. So it's kind of set um, nationally. So the new people coming in uh, don't necessarily pay a big premium over people that it's been in there because it's all rounded in together to come up with a, a averaged out figure. So if, if you have experience in this area, for example, and you for any reasons decided to go to California or Wyoming or wherever, this experience or time that you spent here in business is accounted for you or uh, accounted for? Yes, but when you go to uh, any other state, like we have license in Indiana, Indiana also has individual license for plumbing and for heating and for contracting, which we carry those licenses. Uh, every state and some of the cities in the state has their own licensing requirements. So when you go to another state, you have to stand the exam normally and prove that you're proficient in the trade. And Is it a written exam? No, oh, it's a written exam. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there any practical side of it? Do yes, something? Yes, it's, it's, it's both written and practical. But in the plumbing end, it's three phases. You have the, the hands-on where you actually show that you can uh, do the proper pipe joints and fittings and threadings. They have blueprint reading. You have to be able to do blueprint work. And then they have uh, the written questions that you have to answer. 
Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of a three-sided exam in the plumbing license side. So you really, in a sense, don't start from scratch in there. You use your experience or they look into it at least. At least. Well, you have to have five years experience in the plumbing so, trade to become to somewhere. get a license to start with. Uh -huh. So you have to work as an apprentice and then to stand the exam, pass the exam to get your license uh, to be a plumber and to work in the plumbing trade. So these five years should be under uh, the supervision or the uh, auspices of some uh, trained or licensed First person. two years, it's one apprentice per one licensed plumber. And then the second, third year on, then it's uh, two apprentice per licensed plumber. So in the first two years, it's one on one, a licensed plumber to a to a licensed apprentice. After that, it's one plumber can be responsible for two apprentices mm -hmm. until they pass their exam. Okay. Um, how would you advertise your work? I mean, advertisement is um, the heart and soul of, of being in business, I guess. Our advertisement that we utilize is basically our trucks and equipment. Uh, we keep them well marked, company identification. Uh, they're normally kept clean. They're uh, relatively new, if not new. So we have a pretty decent fleet of trucks that's driving up and down the roads every day, which gives an awful lot of advertising. And then we advertise rather heavily in the yellow pages. Hmm. We don't do any TV advertising because we're on the fringe edge of all of the TV uh, stations in this area. And we do some radio advertising when it comes to the ball games, the tournaments, and the different events that's going on. So, hmm. so trucks and, and, and that go all around the place, all over the place, would, would be a kind of advertisement also. Yeah. Not only just doing the work, but uh, at the same time. It's a traveling billboard. Very good. Very good. And then, um, how would. Uh, customers or clients contact you? Telephone? Uh, come here or what? Normally it's the initial contact is by telephone and then uh, there's appointments made either we go to them or they come to us depending on what the occasion is. So, In, um, in residential plumbing work, is it a one-man job, two-man job? Or what's the typical uh, crew? Uh, service work is a one-man job normally, sometimes two, sometimes more, but normally it's a one-man job. Installation is normally uh, a two-man job or more, so it depends on whether by installation is when you're living in new houses or taking on large jobs. That's normally more than one person. Going to somebody's house to repair something is normally a one-man job. Mm. How many years have we been in this job? Well, 40, 44 years. Oh, so you should have started at five years then. <laughs> yeah, I started when I was five. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. And uh, as you say in the TV, they say we have commercials or messages or whatever, and then we'll come back to the next uh, segment. Okay.